Okay, for 7b, we're asked to find this information and graph again like the previous one for 7a. Now, for this one here, uh, it's written in a different form than the way we had it before. The other one in, in uh, 7a, uh, that had ax squared plus bx plus c. So, this time we're not going to use the vertex formula. Now we can, if we were to expand all this out, foil this out, add all the like terms together, we could get it into ax squared plus bx plus c form, but that's a lot of extra work for you to do. On this one, you can, if you notice that it's already in vertex form, you can read the vertex directly from the formula itself. So, in other words, what I mean by that is this right here, we're going to take the opposite sign of this number and the same sign as the number on the outside because we have, that's our h and k that we have to deal with. So vertex, opposite sign of negative 3 would be positive 3. And then we take the same sign as the one outside, that would be a 4. So now I know automatically that my vertex should be uh, 3, 4, and we could get that without uh, any kind of algebra or multiplying. We just get it directly from the formula itself. So it's something to keep in mind. That will make uh, less work for you if you notice what, that, what form that's in. Okay, we know automatically your axis symmetry as well once we find the vertex. Remember, axis symmetry always starts with x equals no matter what. And it's equal to the x-coordinate of your vertex, always. So I'm going to put x equals 3. That would be your axis symmetry. Now we're ready to find the intercepts. Okay, so we're going to do x-intercept, the y equals 0. Okay, so I put a 0 in here. Now, for this one, this one is going to be solved a little bit differently than the previous example as well. Now the other one I had to do some factoring on to, to uh, solve it, but this one, because it's written in this form, I can use the square root principle that we talked about in an earlier section to solve this one. So what I mean by that is I'm going to isolate the term that has the x in it. So this is negative, I'm going to move it over to the left hand side. And I get x minus 3 squared equals 4. I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. So square root the left hand side I get x minus 3. If I square root the right hand side, don't forget about the plus or minus. So I get plus or minus uh, 2. You can now write this as two separate equations. You're going to do x minus 3 equals 2 and x minus 3 equals negative 2. If we add and solve for each one, we'll get x is equal to 5. If we add 3 to both sides, we get x is equal to 1. So now we know that the x-intercept is going to be uh, 1 and 5. That's where it crosses the x-axis. We need a y-intercept next. So the, for the y-intercept, uh, the common mistake that you would do with y-intercept, let me, uh, so you have all this written down, so I'm going to erase this so we have some space here. Uh, so if we do the, the y-intercept, that means we've got to put in a 0 for x. The common mistake on these kind of problems would be to automatically assume the last number is the, uh, the y-intercept. Okay, now that's true if you have it written in ax squared plus bx plus c form. However, this is written differently. This we got a plus 4 on the end. So, still, just follow the same procedure, put in a 0 for x in order to get the right answer. So, if I put a 0 in for the x here, and I simplify it, I'll get, uh, so inside I get negative 3 squared is 9, but I still have a negative out front. Just the negative inside goes away. Negative 9 plus 4 is going to give us 5. Negative 5. Okay, so negative 5 is your y-intercept. So again, don't just assume that automatically every single time the y-intercept is the last number. You've got to actually do the math, put the 0 in for x, just to be sure. Now that we have this information, we are now ready to graph. So, we'll put all this together. Okay, so for this one, uh, I'll start with my vertex, 3, 4. So 3 and 4 will be right here. I also want to put down my intercepts. I have an x-intercept of 1 and 5. So 1 here, and I get a 5. So 1 and 5 uh, right there. I have a y-intercept of negative 5. Okay, so now notice again that all the numbers 
makes sense. It all lines up for a parabola. So we'll just draw this through and your parabola is going to look something like that. So it, it does open down because we do have a negative sign uh, out front. So we talked about if there's a negative out front, it basically flips the graph and makes it go down like that. Axis symmetry would be this dotted line running right through three. Again, we see that it divides our parabola in half so we can fold one half on top of the other. And now the last thing we gotta do is range. Range is talking about the Y values that the graph uses. For this one, the highest Y value we have is four and it goes all the way down to negative infinity. Make sure you always put the smaller number first. You don't wanna start with four. We're gonna start with negative infinity since it's smaller than four. So we're going to do negative infinity up to 4, and 4 is going to have a bracket on it because it does include that point. So it means that all the y values that are used are only, only values basically that are less than 4, and that's shown here on the graph.